Hello everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to clean the Carl Zeiss Siena Biotarp 5.8 cm F2. This is the second version of the Biotarp with the uh, 17 aperture blades. Now before I get started here of course you're gonna need a couple of tools. I would suggest you get some toilet paper or paper towels, tweezers, some precise screwdrivers with a flat hat, a toothpick, a lens spanner, if you don't have this one you can actually use um, calipers, a wire brush, especially um, with brass bristles, manual air blower and completely optional is of course the uh, lens sucker. And of course you're gonna need the helicoid loop for the lens. Now that we have all the tools that we need to, we can actually get started. I would recommend doing this if you're a beginner, um, get maybe a different lens, a lens that's, a, that's actually out of commission, so you can experiment a bit. Now that we actually got all the tools that we need, we can focus ourselves on the lens. Now for the sake of the entertainment, I actually cleaned the lens uh, beforehand, so I actually know what I'm doing. I didn't find any manuals on the internet on how to clean this uh, version of the lens, so that's why I made this. As you can see it over here, um, it has two retaining rings, so to speak. The nameplate, when you remove it, uh, you're gonna be able to remove the front glass element. I'm not gonna be cleaning the glass elements because I already cleaned them, uh, but I'm still gonna show you how to remove them because uh, I think it's essential to remove the glass before you start working on the lens. Now grab your lens spanner, align the grooves and then just twist it around so it gets loose. Once it's loose you don't need the spanner anymore, you can just use a toothpick, put it on the groove and just start twisting the lens. Once the front part of the um, lens is actually loose, you can just remove it like this. Now, just before I put it away, the nameplate has a retaining ring and when you turn it over, there's also a retaining ring for the rear lens element. So once you remove those two, you'll be able to clean the glass. And just to be safe, put the glass on the side. Now on the back, we have the rear lens element. So we're gonna need our lens spanner again, but this time we're gonna actually have to remove these bits and put the uh, spikes, so to speak, on. Now, these are the spikes I was talking about. The lens spanner comes with uh, these bits and a few other bits. I'm gonna leave the uh, links to products in the description box below in case you need them or you wanna buy them. Now, when it comes to disassembling the rear bit of the lens, set it to infinity focus and find the innermost retaining ring. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it over here. Once you find the most innermost retaining ring, put the spikes in and just untighten it so it's loose. Once you untighten it and it's loose, you can put the lens spanner away and continue unscrewing with the uh, toothpick. Put the toothpick into the groove and just spin around the lens and the retaining ring should come off. Now once it's loose you can just use a toothpick to remove it like this and put it away. Now the rear lens element is made of two parts. This one you can, if you can, you can just grab it and wiggle it around a bit. It's gonna pop out like this. If you can't you just find the uh, retaining ring this one on the inside and turn it around a bit. This isn't screwed to anything, it just sits inside. Now the last lens element is actually this one and this time I'm gonna show you how we can use your calipers to remove it. Grab the calipers but um, do be really really careful because um, these are very sharp and pointy uh, so when you align them with the um, actual groove or retaining ring um, be careful not to scratch the glass because um, then it's over. So align it really carefully and push down, turn it. That way it should come loose. And just like before, grab a toothpick, put it on the groove and start turning the lens. 
even if you slip a bit, the wood isn't gonna scratch the lens. Now once the element is completely loose, I can just put it on the side. And I'm not sure if you can see, but there's also a retaining ring over here on the inside. Remove this one and you'll be able to remove the glass. Now we come to actually to the fun part where we're actually gonna disassemble the entire lens. Almost entire lens, I should say. We're not gonna remove the um, aperture blades because they are really, really clean, especially for the age. Also, I looked it up a bit, and apparently, this my version was made between 1950, 1952. So before we start disassembling the lens, set the lens to infinity and set your aperture to f/2, like this. Also, if you have a smartphone with a camera make pictures because um, it's useful. Now the first bit that we're gonna remove is the um, aperture ring. This aperture is completely clickless. It doesn't have any uh, ball bearings on the inside so there's not gonna be any surprises when you open it. By the way, um, almost the entire lens is held together with the grub screws except on the inside as you're gonna see. Uh, you don't completely have to remove the grub screws um, just untighten them a bit and uh, and you won't lose them so once it's untightened a bit just slip it off put it on the side the next bit that we're gonna remove is the depth of scale ring this part over here again untighten the grub screws don't remove them remove them only if um, the metal of your ring is very dirty and you're actually gonna clean it or polish it. And there we go and just remove the depth of scale ring. Also I didn't mention at the beginning but um, this lens is uh, nickel plated, it's made out of brass. Um, I would suggest using gloves when handling with, with it because um, your fingers are gonna smell. It has that distinctive brass smell so to speak. Now here comes the Probably this car is a bit for the most of you because uh, we're going to be removing the helicoid um, in a bit. But before we get to that part, we're actually going to have to make a few markings. Now, the lens is still on the infinity. So, over here, we're going to mark where the infinity is on the bottom bit, where the uh, depth of scale was. And on the top, we're going to mark where the aperture is it's on f2 and also at the same time this scratch is gonna align with the infinity mark so when we're gonna assemble it back together we're gonna know okay everything is where it's supposed to be now we can actually remove the uh, focusing crank this bit and again these are grub screws you don't have to remove them completely also if you do remove them uh, make sure to label them because the depth of scale grub screws are smaller and once it's loose just slip it off from the top and put it on the side. Now if you moved the focusing ring as you were putting it away um, there's a chance that this middle bit twisted a bit this is actually the focusing. I would suggest you twist it all the way to the uh, counterclockwise and make a marking so that when you're when you're putting that to get back together you're gonna know okay and this is where it was and also make a marking where the infinity is in my case it's over here not sure if you can see it but yeah just grab your pliers or tweezers and just make a scratch this bit once you have the scratches, take a picture with your phone and uh, once you're gonna be assembling the lens back together, everything is gonna be more uh, clear. The scare bit comes next because we're actually gonna completely remove the helicoid. In order to do that, we're gonna have to remove this screw and this screw. These two are actually um, keeping the helicoid together so it doesn't actually pop off. Now these two screws are a bit different. This one is made out of metal and it's uh, a bit bigger than this one. Also this one is made out of brass. Now just remove the screws. Also when you're removing the screws, 
um, try not to uh, twist the lens a bit now that I have the screws completely out the uh, focusing helicoid is completely loose so once you're gonna start turning it and turning it uh, it's gonna pop out so be careful now the next thing that you're gonna you should do is um, the focusing ring turn it completely counterclockwise so it's tight when you turn it over to the uh, left side make a marking where the uh, infinity focus was and uh, that way you're good you're gonna know where the uh, focus begins and ends and once you've done that you can actually start removing the helicoid just start turning it counterclockwise now you have to be careful you're gonna have to know a bit where does the helicoid actually separate so experience i would say is you know when it's actually gonna pop up if you're doing this for the first time i suggest uh, especially with this lens keep it turned on the this side so you have the markings over here and just keep twisting the helicoid and when you wiggle it around a bit you're gonna notice it's a bit more loose and then just small turns and you can hear it's wiggling a bit and it's come off now at this point I should mention don't do this don't just take it off like I did hold it together take a picture make markings where at which point did it come apart now in my case all of the arrows align so I know this is the part where it uh, actually came off so put a helicoid over here because we still have this bit now this part over here the focusing ring we actually tighten it all the way to the left um, this is just a normal screw thread as far as I'm aware because uh, it doesn't matter how I put it on it still ends up on the same place just unscrew it put it on the side this bit and this bit and the inner side everything is gonna have old grease inside so we're gonna have to remove it I'm gonna put this over here for a bit now there are still two things that we're actually gonna have to re remove the metal bit with the aperture indicator and the actual aperture uh, ring also in case you move to the uh, aperture ring you can still move it around now loosen the grub screws once the grub screws are loosened just slip it off also i should mention um at this point probably we're gonna have a lot of old grease over here just grab a paper towel and uh, toilet paper and wipe it off we're gonna be handling the cleaning later on once we remove this bit now the aperture control ring has only one screw inside this is actually screwed in on the inner bit and it's actually rotating the blades you can set this ring to about um, f2 or maybe f5.6 and just um, remove the uh, screw put the screw aside and uh, this is basically another screw thread i recommend you twist it all the way clockwise until it's nice and tight and in my case x marks the spot i know the x that it scratched on here it was already on here when i turn it about half a turn i know i'm gonna have to put the screw in over here and yeah just remove it unscrew it it has a long screw thread so now once this is removed we can start cleaning the actual lens. I turn on the light just in case, but um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I already cleaned this lens because um, I didn't find any manuals on the internet, so I wanted to give it a go. Um, now, when it comes to cleaning the lenses, uh, in most cases, for, m for me it worked. You can get denatured alcohol, just remove the old grease or um, put all of the metal bits except the aperture blades these require a lot of uh, careful handling when you clean them now when you have everything disassembled uh, I would recommend you put it in the hot water for about 10-15 minutes with uh, dish soap 
and let it soak a bit so the uh, old grease comes nice and loose. After that, get it off the water, wipe it off clean, and uh, if you still see a bit of the old grease, you can grab it and grab the um, wire brush with the brass, then just clean the helicoid. Now when you're cleaning the lens, you really have to be careful not to damage any of the parts, either the helicoid thread or the screw thread, because uh, if it gets damaged, uh, your lens is kind of useless. Now our lens is cleaned and it's removed from the old grease, so we're gonna have to reapply new grease. Um, I use specifically this grease from the Polar Bear camera. I use soft grease because in most of my cases it's worked perfectly, it's really nice and smooth. I'm gonna leave the link to this product in the description so you can buy it if you want it. I know some people actually use uh, regular automotive uh, grease but uh, this one is uh, specifically made for lenses. So I know it's working, it should. Also I should mention they have different viscosities of this in grease so you can get it in medium and hard and very hard. Now when it comes to re-looping the lens, you actually you just grab a brush, if you don't have it, grab a few q-tips, dip it in just a little bit. This, I'm not sure if you can see it. Once you dip your brush in, just apply the grease on the helicoid. Now I should mention that um, don't put too much grease on it because you're gonna have uh, a lot of problems in the future. Now we apply the degrees on the helicoid and on the screw thread for the uh, aperture control. Now it's time to assemble the lens back together and just um, the aperture control ring, it doesn't matter how you put it on uh, because it's a regular screw thread. So just screw it on. Now when you're gonna be screwing it on, there's a chance you're gonna encounter some resistance. Just twist it left and right, so you're gonna work the grease into the grooves. Now once you have it turned all the way, so it's nice and tight, go back a bit for about maybe half a turn. Align the holes, so X marks the spot, align it with the hole and screw in the screw for the aperture control. Also I should mention when you're screwing in the screws or the grub bits or the grub screws um, finger tighten them don't use the force otherwise you're gonna break it we screw the screw back in and the aperture is working as it should now the next bit that we're gonna re-loop is this part the focusing ring the easiest part is um, just put the grease on the screw thread screw it back together you don't actually have to put the grease on the inside over here. So screw it back together and if we take a look at the markings that we made, they align. Now why don't you need to put the grease on the inside? Well, it's simple because you already have the grease on this part of the helicoid and once you start turning it together, the grease is gonna work itself back in. Now this is the last bit we have to put on before we actually put the helicoids together. I uh, should probably mention that um, use gloves because at this point you're gonna have grease all over your fingers are so gonna have to keep wiping them all the time. Now just once you have the ring on and aligned the arrow with the scratch mark just finger tighten the uh, grub screws. So once you have the indicator back on you can test the aperture if it's working and as you can see it's working as it should. Now that we have that part on, we can actually put these two bits together. And as if you, if you remember from earlier, if we align all the scratches, start twisting the helicoid back together, everything aligns and we have infinity focus. Now before I put the helicoid back together, I should probably mention that these grooves that you can see over here, this is the bit where the screws are sitting in and I actually keep the helicoid from popping off and also if you're gonna put too much grease on the helicoid this is the part where it's gonna drip out over the years and it's gonna go on the aperture blades and on the uh, 
lens elements. So now you can put the helicoids back together. We just align the scratch marking, the markings that we made and just gently screw it back together. Work it back and forth so the new grease makes its way in. Also, if you didn't put enough grease on, you're gonna feel it because there's gonna be some resistance, so just dip your brush into the grease and apply it to the helicoid. By the way, this grease that I'm using, it's uh, synthetic, so it doesn't leave any smell. Now, when you don't feel any resistance on the helicoid, you know, that's enough grease on the inside. Also, if you put too much grease on, you're gonna see it come from this bit. This is actually the holes for the uh, helicoid. Now, before we start assembling the lens back together, we can just wipe it off a bit with a paper towel or toilet paper, so you get rid of all of the grease that you put on. <laughs> now, once you wiped off the excess grease, just align the scratch markings. This mark the infinity focus. Once you've done this, you can put the screws back into the helicoid to just make sure to align the hole with the groove on the inside of the helicoid. Otherwise, if you're gonna start screwing in, you're gonna mess up the entire helicoid. And once again, finger tighten the screws. And you should probably note where does the screw go because one is bigger than the other. Now once you have the screws back in, you can just turn the helicoid ring and just make sure the helicoid stays in place so it doesn't pop off. So everything is at place over here, so we can continue. Align the markings for the infinity focus and try not to move this one, especially because this one sets the infinity and once you're gonna put on the focusing ring you can see maybe if you put it on you accidentally can twist the middle bit um, try not to move it and just put the ring on on the infinity and finger tighten the grub screws now once you have the focusing part on you can just test out if it's working as it should working so the next bit we can put on is the uh, depth of scale so again set the lens to infinity we made a mark over here earlier where it marks the infinity and we just put the depth of scale on set it to infinity and tighten the cross screws also when you're tightening the depth of scale ring put the lens upside down because it's still loose and it can now that we have the depth of scale on we'll try it again it's still working as it should and the final bit that we're gonna put on is the aperture ring I should mention these holes these were made probably in the factory when they were screwing in the grub screws because uh, if you don't align them with the holes and you screw them in let's say for example on this side they're actually gonna stick out they're not gonna go all the way in so one way to align them is actually align the holes and when you screw them in you're gonna know if the grub screw goes all the way on the inside you hit the hole if it's gonna stay out you didn't hit the hole also don't tighten these grub screws too much on the uh, aperture ring because I have a feeling they actually control how soft or how hard um, the actual aperture is turning around. If you tighten them too much you're basically squeezing the metal bit that we removed uh, in the last. So again don't use force just finger tighten them. Now that we have it all tightened up you can actually try out it's really soft. When I got the lens um, it, the focusing and the aperture were just stiff it was the aperture ring was so hard to twist it so just uh, yeah but yeah now that we have everything assembled back together you can clean the lens again with a toilet paper in case there is still some grease on now turn the lens upside down at this point it doesn't really matter if you had it set to infinity or not if your aperture is f2 or whichever number 
just uh, put the lens upside down, grab the first rear lens element and put it in. Um, in case you don't want to just drop them on, on in the lens, grab a lens sucker tool and just gently put it in. Remove the lens sucker, then grab the toothpick, put it in the groove and just twist it around till it's nice and tight. You can tighten it later on with the, uh, with the D lens banner. Also at this point I should mention it's a good time to inspect the glass if it has any bits on, if it has some dust on, you can still dust it off a bit. Maybe use a microfiber cloth to remove some debris or dust. With these old biter lenses, um, if you're gonna see a dot or a speck on the glass, you're probably gonna think, hey that is dust, why doesn't it come off? Um, well, it's actually not dust, but it's a um, bubble because this, uh, this glass was hand blown, and, you know, there are imperfections. But um, yeah, just a uh, thought, I, thought I should mention. Now put the second bit of the rear element on the inside. This one you can just put it on. This element doesn't screw in, you just have to work it on the inside. And don't forget to put on the retaining ring. Put it on, maybe use a toothpick to... Actually the toothpick method isn't working so I'm gonna have to use the lens banner. Twist the lens around a bit so, so the retaining ring actually grabs to the thread and then you can use a toothpick to screw it on all the way. And once you have it tightened, just tighten it all the way with the lens banner. Turn the lens around and put the last element in. Now put the front glass element back inside. And this one you can just use the same method with the toothpick. Put it in the groove and just turn around the lens so it's tight. Once you have it tightened, just remove the spikes from your lens panner and put this back on. Set it into the groove and just tighten it. And that's it. That's how you clean the Carl's Zeiss Sienna Biotar 5.8 cm f2 17 aperture blades version. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial sort of. Mm, I still have a lot of old lenses in my house so if you're interested I'm probably gonna upload a video to how to clean them. But yeah this does it for today so thank you so much for watching.